Welcome everyone to Sobriety Over Society, the podcast dedicated to prioritizing personal health and well-being over societal expectations. In each episode, I'll share challenges and tips to support you on your journey towards sobriety. My goal is to encourage you to embrace discomfort and push beyond your comfort zone. Connect with me on Instagram at Sobriety Over Society Podcast to share your thoughts and suggest topics you'd like to hear more about. Episode three, I'm very excited. And as always, I am super grateful for your continued support and engagement in this journey towards sobriety. Your stories and experiences inspire me, and I hope that this podcast can serve as a source of encouragement and guidance for those who are also striving towards a sober lifestyle. I also really appreciate the feedback that I've received so far, and I'm eager to hear more about your progress and how you view sobriety as a fundamental part of your life. And to remember that sobriety is not a destination, but a journey that requires ongoing effort and commitment. So by sharing our experiences when we're ready and supporting one another, we can really create a community of individuals who are dedicated to living a fulfilling and sober life. On today's episode, we will be discussing the concept of quick bursts of dopamine versus long-term stimulation and how it relates to addiction, as well as how our behavior changes with the seasons. So for anyone who needs a bit of a refresher on the role of dopamine, it is a neurotransmitter that plays a crucial part in our brain's reward system. It is released when we engage in pleasurable activities, such as eating delicious and yummy food, or engaging in physical activity. So The problem, though, sometimes with uh, pleasurable activities is they're not all created equal. So some activities, such as using drugs, alcohol, um, gambling, provide a quick burst of dopamine that can lead to addiction, while other activities, such as exercising or building meaningful relationships, provide a more sustained and long-term release of dopamine. When I think back to my experiences and my relation with addiction, I really think back to the activities I engaged in and those that provided that quick burst of dopamine. So like I said, um, consuming alcohol or if your addiction is related to drugs or gambling, that's when our brain's reward system is activated. So this leads to a cycle of addiction where we seek out these activities to achieve the same rush of dopamine over and over again even when the activity begins to have negative consequences on our lives. So in my last couple of episodes, I touched on setting realistic and attainable goals when first considering your sober journey, uh, especially because we need to look far ahead and see what's going to keep us engaged in this journey. So when we set those sustainable goals, we are rewarding ourselves more than just with those quick fixes because they offer a sense of purpose, accomplishment, and long-term benefits. And while quick fixes may provide that temporary relief or satisfaction, they often come with negative consequences and do not address the root problem. And I know I touched on this a little bit, but it's nice to actually incorporate the effects of those quick bursts of dopamine. So an example of this is let's say you want to lose weight quickly, which I've been there. I'm sure many of you have been there as well, uh, especially, you know, with societal pressures on how we're expected to look. Um, You decide to go on a crash diet. And although this might provide some quick results, my first uh, diet that comes to mind was keto. I saw weight loss within the first week. But I noticed that this was not sustainable whatsoever because I still found myself craving foods that weren't necessarily unhealthy. I just wasn't intuitive when I was considering how I'm going to approach eating them throughout the week. So although we're getting those quick results, this is, of course, not sustainable and it can be very harmful to your health. So that's where, you know, you start to overeat. And you might end up gaining the weight back once you stop the diet or even experience some other long-term health issues. It's also why I really stressed in the last uh, two episodes as well the importance of that grace period and winning in silence. Because like I said, there's so much pressure 
uh, on on us. And when we engage with people who have a lot of opinions with perhaps whatever you're doing, if you're telling them about a diet, you know, they might encourage it and they might say, oh, that's great because it worked for them. But we have to understand that we're all different. So it's really important to keep what you're doing to yourself until you're ready to explore it with the world. And then on the other hand of those quick results and uh, unattainable goals, we have setting sustainable goals to improve your overall health uh, and fitness by incorporating a more balanced diet and regular exercise routine that can lead to long-term benefits. So I'm also an example of this. I've dieted. I've tried so many fad diets and I feel good in the first couple of days. And then oh, I remember it was I was I went to a coffee shop and uh, I saw on the board uh, a keto coffee and it had butter in it. And I was just thinking back to when I was doing the keto diet and the stress I put myself through eating all these fats. And, you know, of course, if someone's listening and they're doing that, you know, if it's working, I, you know, it's your decision and uh, I want you to experience it for what it is and, and come to your own conclusions. But for me, it was not sustainable. So even seeing that on the board at the coffee shop, it just made it triggered me to think back to when I when I attempted this diet and I just it, it just didn't work. So from my experience after living those quick fad diets and, and, and having those a uh, dopamine burst, I started engaging in physical activity that was way more sustainable and learning more about intuitive eating. So keeping my carbs, you know, keeping my fats, uh, tracking calories, but on a very healthy basis where, you know, if I went over, if I didn't hit the target, it wasn't life or death. And that's really important when considering your sober journey, uh, not only your sustainable goals, but what they are. This all relates back to as well when I spoke about uh, learning a new skill or pursuing a hobby or volunteering. Um, and just for anyone listening, it's also posted on my Instagram page as well. Um, this provides those long term benefits uh, for your own personal growth, social connections and a sense of purpose. So for me, uh, my new skill was definitely ways I challenged myself in the gym, you know, not even be, being able to do a pull-up to now hitting seven pull-ups, uh, pursuing a hobby. So that became researching podcasts and eventually creating my own podcast and then volunteering. Uh, I became a big sister and just throughout all those experiences, I've met so many wonderful people. I've had incredible conversations with those who share similar interests. So it really does create that sense of purpose and almost solidifies, you know, your decision on becoming sober and pursuing these wonderful activities and passions. I found myself walking to an appointment uh, earlier in the week and I had passed by a liquor store and, you know, the sun was out. And for a quick moment, I kind of thought back to days where I would day drink and I would make this excuse that because it was during the day. Uh, you know, I wouldn't wake up with a, with a hangover. I wouldn't be out late and I'd be able to do stuff the next morning. So what also comes with, you know, these quick bursts of dopamine hits and uh, these short-term stimulations is you you also tend to make excuses for them and them being the addictions that we're maybe not aware of in the moment. But all these little justifications I had for when I drank in order to make myself feel better. So this is also... Very similar to when you find yourself uh, scrolling through social media, you know, you're looking for stimulation or a sense of purpose through uh, binge watching TV shows. And don't get me wrong, I still do that. I still find myself watching these ridiculous shows, but I make sure to have a balance. You know, uh, I've had a long week. I've I've accomplished some of my challenges I set out to do. I've engaged in many different activities. And so, you know, you want to give yourself a bit of self-care and that may be those those dreadful TV shows that we love so much or scrolling through social media. But like I said, it's balance. It's setting time limits on on how long you're on social media for or making sure that the content on your social media is healthy, it's engaging and it it 
reward your system in, in long term and not just for for those quick moments of trying to feel better. This also makes me think of the weather. And part of this episode is uh, talking about changing with the season. So something that I've been living by is watching my growth uh, throughout the seasons. And I remember thinking about it when I was walking to the gym one morning uh, and it was just heavy snow, so dark. And every part of me wanted to just jump in a car. But I had actually set a goal for myself not to use uh, Vancouver's car sharing service. It's uh, called Evo. And although it just killed me not to be able to hop in a nice warm car, I felt so rewarded by trekking through this absurd weather. And I knew as I was getting closer and closer to my gym, I was closer and closer to another day of accomplishing a challenge. So. In this moment, though, I also thought about my growth this far, and I I started telling myself, wow, I'm really changing with the seasons, because that same time last year, I would never have walked to the gym in that weather. I just, it would never have happened. So I really wanted to incorporate this, this concept of, of growing with the seasons and changing with the seasons. Getting sober can have a significant impact on your life, especially when it comes to how you experience different seasons. So while the transition from one season to another can be challenging for anyone, it can be especially difficult for individuals in recovery. So I would like to set out some ways that getting sober can affect you during different seasons and how to navigate it. Because for me, when summer hit, all I wanted to do was drink. And like I said, day drinking going out in the evening, making excuses uh, because the weather was nice and because we live in Vancouver, we don't get this weather uh, throughout the year. Now, summer, I think I want to start off with summer because I find it especially difficult just because it's the time to be outdoors. The you know, There's lots of activities going on, barbecues, vacations. And for, for some individuals in recovery, it can also be a season filled with triggers and challenges. Many social events during the summer involve drinking, which can be difficult to navigate. Additionally, the heat and humidity can exacerbate feelings of anxiety and stress, which can be triggers for substance abuse. My way of navigating the summer is really exploring what kind of non-alcoholic beverages uh, that are out there. Uh, and you wouldn't believe it. There, there are many. And they may not be delicious. I've definitely found some that are, even with low sugar. So some obviously have higher sugar. Um, but you know, when you're when you're facing addiction, that can be the last thing on your mind. You just want to have something that can help you get through uh, a social situation where you may feel out of sorts because you would normally be spending that time drinking. So really try and come prepared, whether it's uh, being asked to the beach where you know your surroundings are going to be lots of drinking, uh, whether it's to a barbecue or sporting event, uh, really anything, you want to come prepared. So like I said, bringing non-alcoholic uh, beverages where, where you're allowed. Um, for me too, I joined a outdoor volleyball group and, you know, their whole mantra was, you know, health and wellness. So it wasn't to start off a big uh, engagement of alcohol abuse, but you know there was definitely a few people there having having some alcohol, and it was it was fine. But I also made sure uh, to bring in some non alcoholic beverages, and it actually really when you are ready and you are comfortable talking about your sobriety, it is a nice conversation starter because they look at it, and the way that some al non alcoholic beverages are marketed is they look identical <laughs> to alcoholic beverages. So people would come up to me and, you know, ask me, oh, what are you drinking? And I would explain to them and, you know, they might say, oh, you're not drinking today. And if I felt comfortable, I would explain like, oh, no, I've been sober for uh, for this long. And again, it, it just it really opens up the conversation, especially from the get go when you're surrounding yourself with like minded people who want to see you succeed. A huge factor in your journey as a sober individual, especially for me, was all about who you surround yourself with. And I know I spoke about this in the last couple of episodes, 
although hard at times, because you do have to really understand, is this person benefiting me or is this person hindering me? And although it may not be their their intention, but you are now on a journey where some of these things don't mesh well together. So that's all I can really share throughout this podcast. The main thing that will really help your sobriety and of course amongst all the other things as well is surrounding yourself with like-minded people who want to see you succeed, who want to grow with you, who you make an impact on and vice versa. And that really stems from the first step of considering uh, sobriety or uh, a life of um, health and wellness. And before I get into fall, I also want to share that um, I have posted some resources as well um, for non-alcoholic beverages, some that I've tried myself and I absolutely love, uh, especially the stories behind the companies. A lot of them are women-owned or they have themselves stories of their journey uh, for either addiction recovery or uh, to a life of uh, sobriety. The fall is definitely the season where it can be a time of transition and change with the start of new school year, cooler temperatures, and the changing colors of the leaves. For individuals in recovery, it can also be a time of increased stress and anxiety. So the shorter days and longer nights can lead to feelings of depression and loneliness, which can also be triggers for substance abuse. So when you're transitioning from that feeling of, oh, I'm free, the sun's out in summer and nothing can stop you, you know, fall's coming and that's when things really start to pick up again. So making sure that you're well prepared, just like you would be going to a function in the summer, making sure you're well equipped and preparing for, you know, those shorter days and longer nights. So if you're a night owl, uh, how are you going to work on maybe getting to sleep earlier? How are you going to navigate the days? Uh, So there is really a lot to take in. I find for me as I enter the fall, uh, I like to look at the week ahead and see how I'm going to prioritize uh, certain things on, you know, my to-do list or work-related assignments. You know, you that's another big thing when you become sober is you've got you've got such a clear mind that you you think you think more logically and you're able to prioritize and really understand how best to go about a day or a week. You know, despite getting sober being a challenge, it's also something to take advantage of. Like I said, you're you you're operating at a much higher level now because you're not clouded with hangovers and doubt and regret. So really try and see sobriety and addiction recovery from that point of view where you can actually take advantage of it. Especially when all you've ever really known is yourself navigating life as somebody who uses substances or alcohol. So another thing to think of is, say you're going into your second year university and your first year was just filled with partying and engaging with individuals who share similar interests with relating to alcohol or drug use. And, you know, you're going into your next year sober you have to remember not to stress about how things were in the past because it's going to be different you now have a new set of challenges but like I said all these challenges are going to come a little differently because you're now operating with a clear mind so some things from your past that came easy to you may now be a challenge whereas some things that were a challenge in your past may come easy so it's really reversing your cycle uh, and how you how you navigate your day to day and and your perspective. Your perspective really changes. So these are all things to also look forward to as you start uh, the fall season and and you're really thinking about your past when what you should just be thinking of is how you're going to tackle this year as the new you. Now for winter. Ooh. This is a tough one, Uh, but it always brings me joy thinking about winter because I think back to that Game of Thrones uh, winter is coming meme. But yes, winter is definitely a challenge. And even as I spoke about walking to the gym in the morning, uh, 
knee deep in snow, I I find myself just wanting to crawl back into bed. But this is this is the season where you're going to really grow as a person, especially when you're still continuing your sober journey and accomplishing those challenges and those goals. Winter is really a test of everything you've applied so far, uh, especially because you're also getting to that point where eventually you're going to hit New Year's and all those New Year's resolutions start flowing. And I know I spoke about that in the downfall of New Year's resolutions. So this is really a difficult time, but it's also, like I said, where you're going to be the most tested. And if you come out of this on top, it's going to set you for success for the new year where you don't even have to set these crazy, unrealistic New Year's resolutions. Now, winter too is often associated with holiday festivities, which can be difficult for individuals in recovery. So the stress of holiday preparations, family gatherings, and the pressure to be happy can trigger those who are struggling with substance abuse. Additionally, like I said, the cold and the dark days of winter can really trigger feelings of depression and anxiety, especially when it's getting darker so much faster. And some of those activities, maybe sporting activities that you've engaged in in the summer are no longer available. So how I like to spend my winters is, of course, with family, um, especially since they're very much aware of my sobriety. But also, again, like I said, surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. So if somebody you know is sober, you know, finding ways you two can connect either at a coffee shop or something indoors. Also, winter can be a very wonderful time outdoor. It just depends on what you can do. For myself, I don't ski, I don't snowboard. So really, it's it's a lot of planning and imagination that comes in for me when when thinking about winter. And also, that's where I really focus on the gym. So in the summer, you know, I'm out and about. Uh, although I'm very much still engaged in physical activity, it is it is in a different way. So for me, the winter time is a great time to sign up for a gym. You know, it's indoor. You can still go running. Uh, you can really set out some new goals. You know, if you've been wanting to work on your mental health or you've been wanting to work on your fitness, this is a great time to do so. When I think back to as best as I can when I first considered getting sober, because I got sober in the summertime. So that was definitely a challenge. Uh, I got sober, though, when COVID hit. So my my anniversary date is May 1st. Now, I was just in the in the midst of, of COVID, and so we were in lockdown. So that came with its own challenges. But also, there were some benefits, despite it being, you know, a very difficult time for a lot of people where I didn't have those pressures to go out and feel like I was missing out. So similar, though, with winter is you've got these holiday parties. Perhaps you have um, holiday parties from your work. And I know from my own experience, work parties are not very inclusive of sobriety, of people who want to be sober. You know, it's usually filled with a lot of alcohol. And, you know, there are some regulations starting to happen on, you know, what employers can have at their at their holiday parties, how they how they offer alcoholic beverages. So this is changing, but it is best to be prepared. So if it's a place that allows you to bring your own non-alcoholic beverages, really take advantage. I did that at mine. I remember too, I took a picture of it because they had set out this big ice bucket with all these different alcoholic beverages. And I just plopped my my two drinks, my two lovely non-alcoholic beverages right in front of them all and took a nice picture because Really, your employer should be providing non-alcoholic beverages. So this is a nice time, too, if you're comfortable to speak with your employer if you have an upcoming holiday party where you ask them to provide those non-alcoholic drinks. Parties in general, too, can be very difficult for somebody in addiction recovery or somebody just thinking about getting sober. Because you're really met with a group of individuals who want to celebrate a hard year or a difficult last couple of weeks, you know, coming up to the end of the year. There's so many factors for, for one to celebrate. So 
you know, having an exit strategy as well. So for any season that is, exit strategies are very important. So even if it's an excuse, like the meter's running out and you've got to move your car or you're only in two hour parking, you have to move your car or you have to wake up early in the morning or just setting boundaries before you attend the party. So if a coworker asks if you're going, you say, yes, but I can only stay till X amount of time. So there's a lot of things you can do too to set those boundaries and provide yourself with a, a smooth exit where you don't have that person telling you to stay and let loose. You know, you really want to be well prepared for parties because they can be a lot of pressures can uh, arise from attending a holiday party. I also found with the holidays that it also brings a time of stress and difficulties for those who maybe don't have a great relationship with family are going through a hard time and they don't have the added benefit of a friend for advice or access to resources to support them. So it's also a time to give and that's something I posted on my account as well just some ways you can volunteer and give back. Uh, I remember having a friend who on Christmas when when we were uh, celebrating, you know, the exchange of gifts, um, they were out um, helping uh, homeless people uh, by providing them with food and comfort. So there are ways to uh, to navigate the holidays where if you are struggling, you have ways of feeling better by giving back. So even though that may be what we talked about, a quick burst of dopamine, it's a good quick burst of dopamine. And it will it will have an effect long term on you when you provide that sense of comfort to somebody who's in need. And that's why I love volunteering, especially being a big sister. Every time I see my little sister, I leave feeling really happy and that I've made even though small, just a little impact in her day, hopefully. Um, and that we're seeing that relationship grow, although slow, it is something that will provide you and does provide me with happiness long term. And we finish up with spring. So spring is a time of new beginnings, but the arrival of warmer temperatures, blooming flowers and longer days. So as I record this episode, we're in the midst of spring coming into summer here. Uh, in the next month. And it's definitely triggered me to think back to how I spent uh, those warmer days. But like I said, I can't think back. I can't think in the past. I can only think about now and ahead and how I'm going to navigate it as this new person. So individuals in recovery, spring can be a time of renewal and hope, but it can also be a time of increased stress and anxiety as we prepare for the summer months. So spring fever, a feeling of restlessness and excitement can be a trigger for substance abuse. So really, as I talk about all the seasons, you can you can see the impact that they would have on somebody considering getting sober or somebody who's trying to recover from an addiction. There's so many different triggers. So you really just have to focus on you and not your past or what it was like and how you're going to set yourself up for success. So taking in my first episode where we talk about winning in silence and the grace period, and my second episode where I talk about the first 30 days and how to set yourself up for success through hobbies, interests, distractions, setting those realistic goals, uh, sustainable goals, and how we can be affected by different motivations to today's episode and where we understand the difference between quick bursts of dopamine versus long-term stimulation and how crucial it is when it comes to addiction and addiction recovery. We also noted the importance of engaging in activities that provide a sustainable and healthy release of dopamine that can promote overall well-being and not to forget recognizing how our behavior changes with the seasons can help us identify potential triggers and make those adjustments to our lifestyle to support our mental health and recovery. Thank you again for tuning in to the third episode of this podcast. I really hope you found this information helpful. 
um, this this topic of conversation has really made me think back to how I've navigated the changing seasons with my recovery. And as we come into the the warmer temperatures, I'm definitely feeling the heat. Um, <clears throat> no pun intended, but really get yourself ready and see what's out there. This is a learning opportunity to see what works for you. And like I said, I'll post some resources as well. Um, for challenges for, for this upcoming week, uh, that's exactly what it is. It's uh, learning about the different resources that are going to help you. So I don't know what's around you, but if you have London Drugs or even grocery stores, they have wonderful options for um, non-alcoholic beverages, especially um, if you have it with you uh, in your area. Body Energy Clubs provide really nice options. And then if you're comfortable, sometimes uh, liquor stores do provide them, but I'd use that as a last resort. Even myself, I can't remember the last time I stepped into a liquor store to find a non-alcoholic beverage. I think it was when I went to Kelowna once, but I still found more success going into a um, grocery store. So that's definitely something to think about in the future as well as how, how, are, how the world's going to change when it comes to liquor stores and how they offer it. Is there going to be a section uh, filled with non-alcoholic beverages to make it easy for an individual to walk into a liquor store and know that they have that support? Or is it just going to be through these different uh, avenues where we can access uh, non-alcoholic beverages? So keep an eye out on my wall for uh, for those resources. And then again, uh, for this week's challenge, find ways that are going to help you navigate uh, these upcoming warmer months or just in general um, how you're going to go about uh, feeling okay in social situations with these uh, potential resources. And if you find some that are just working for you, be sure to send them my way because I'd love to uh, try them myself. Um, and like I said, I'll also share what's worked for me and hopefully it works for you. Thank you again for tuning into the episode today. I hope you found it informative and inspiring. Remember, episodes are every second Sunday, so mark your calendars and join me again on May 14th. Um, as we close out today's episode, I want to leave you with some motivation to stay sober for the week ahead. I know it can be a little intimidating when you're thinking in advance, but just to remember that you have the strength and determination to overcome any challenges that come your way. So take it one day at a time, surround yourself with positive influences, and never forget why you started on this journey. I believe in you and wish you all the best on your path to sobriety. Until next time, stay strong and stay sober.